Sophia, I've been sort of hoping I, I could swing it, but she's got a, she's got a super busy uh, busy travel schedule, and uh, would have been really appropriate given the, the crypto chicks aspect of the of the event and everything. But per yeah yeah per, per, perhaps next year. There's only not that many Sophias around, and there's there's a lot of us trying to pull her pull her to different events. But I, but I will tell you a bit about. Uh, the AI behind Sophia, both what's operating her now and, and what we're we're looking at doing to upgrade her in, in, in the near future. However, but before we get to that, you will have the privilege of watching me connect my laptop to the AV system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, that works. All right, I think uh, that, that was miraculously Rapid, actually, it's an old saying that the the AV is harder than the AI, but they both they both seem to be improving bit by bit. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about what I've been doing the last couple of years with with Singularity Net, which ties in with the Sophia robot, and I'll show you some videos of Sophia running on on Singularity Net, lacking lacking the actual robot, but also underlies a bunch of other application projects besides uh, besides Sophia and I, I'm, I'm gonna try to try my best to leave a bit of time for questions and and back and forth at the end and of course singularity net is its its own project which we started in in 2017 but it builds on a whole bunch of work in AI and in distributed systems that, that my my colleagues and I have been working on for, uh, for, for, for a long time beforehand. And this work with SingularityNet and AI running on SingularityNet, I mean, this is part of a much larger trend, a much larger unfolding of AI, right? So I, I've been doing AI since 1980s, got excited about it in the late 60s and early 70s when I was, was a little kid reading about AI and seeing it in science fiction. Now we're in the midst of what I think of as a narrow AI revolution, where we have AI applied to many different special domains and doing highly specialized things. And I think we're just about to see in the next, say, three to seven years, what I think of as the AGI revolution, artificial general intelligence revolution, where we have AIs that can generalize, transfer knowledge, and uh, imagine, create, and really go beyond their training and programming. And of course, that will bring with it AIs that can modify their own source code and create new AIs, which uh, will lead to what has been referred to as artificial superintelligence, which is connected with what Ray Kurzweil and others have called the singularity, which is a whole, whole, other, whole other topic, right? And I think, you know, AI, is probably you know, the biggest technology to be created in, in, in human history. It's the first time humans will create a new technology that can create new technologies, that can create new technologies. Right? On the other hand, a lot of other technologies are needed in support of, of AI, from chips to databases, and blockchain as well, I think, is gonna be a key technology enabling AI to to be rolled out in a in a beneficial way through through all these different transitions. None of us knows exactly how AI is going to unfold in the next years and, and decades. It, 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 it could be that, you know, some twelve year old hacker in in Kazakhstan, you know, creates a new AI algorithm that achieve super intelligence running on on his laptop or his home server farm right now my my guess is it's not going to be quite like that and that it's going to be somewhat of an emergent phenomenon with a number of different ais running on different machines interacting with each other and with non-ai software and with stores of data and with human beings and you're going to see general intelligence sort of gradually emerge out of this overall computing network. So in, 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 in that sense, you could look at the internet as sort of, uh, you know, the breeding grounds, like, like a primordial soup where, where intelligence is, is going to self-organize and, and emerge. 
if it unfolds that way, then the AI isn't something that's like growing in a box separate from human society, but rather AI is you know, evolving in a way that's closely interconnected with, with human society. And, you know, this is good. This means that AI will be able to understand human culture and, and human values. It'll be growing up along with people. It also means that some of the less desirable aspects of human society may be reflected in, in the AI's mind as the, as the AI's mind grows, right? And one aspect here is, you know, the trend to global wealth inequality where, you know, a, a small percent of people get richer and richer and richer and everyone else on the planet stays about the same or gets richer at a much, much slower pace. I mean, this AI can exacerbate this, right? I mean, the extreme case would be you've got a thousand rich guys who own all the robot factories and the AI is controlling everything and everybody else has to has to root around in the garbage outside the robot robot factories right? and hopefully that extreme won't, won't be achieved but there, there, there's a lot of other undesirable things that could happen you know increasing inequality can lead to increasing unrest and, and cyber cyber terrorism and a lot of bad things so that the intersection of AI with global economic dynamics is something that needs a lot of thought and this ties in with the current situation where AI is dominated by a dozen large companies and, and a couple large governments, which is, which is not really the most desirable situation, thinking in terms of like, how do we shape the next generation of minds on the planet and, and guide them toward, that, toward a beneficial super intelligence. I mean, the AIs that we're creating on the planet right now, these are serving valuable functions, mostly positive functions, in some cases causing trouble. But the AIs we're creating now, hiding inside, you know, Google Maps and, and your self-driving car and your stock trading platform and the supply chain optimization platform and Sophia and other robots, these AIs are not just AIs doing specific things. They're also, in a way, the early stage of what will evolve into a general intelligence and, and, and super intelligence. And that, that, that gives sort of a, a different way of thinking about it. So, I mean, what kind of AGI and artificial super intelligence are, are we now creating? And if you know a bit about AI learning algorithms, you could, you could see that the business structure of the organizations deploying AI even connects to the specific AI algorithms being used in ways that are obvious to people in the field and not so obvious outside. Because AI is now being driven by large corporations and governments that have accumulated a lot of data about, about people. And this means these organizations, they have a motivation to develop AI that they can use better than everyone else can use. So AI that needs a lot of data is gonna get prioritized because that gives more differential advantage to the companies accumulating a lot of data. AI that needs less data will not be prioritized in the current situation because anyone could use it. It doesn't give a differential advantage to guys with a lot of data and, and processing power. So even down to which algorithms get all the research attention, the, bu the business structure is, is highly valuable. And Additionally, the way AIs work toward goals depends a lot on the, the business and organizational structure. I mean, something like trading on financial markets or optimizing, you know, how often people click on ads, this has very simple quantitative goals associated with it. And this leads you to certain algorithms, algorithms like reinforcement learning algorithms, which work at optimizing a certain number, right? Whereas if you have an AI that does something a little more qualitative where it's hard to measure how well it's doing, again, AI is focusing on more qualitative or creative type of goals, emotional type of goals. These won't get prioritized because they don't really fit into the worldview of these heavy like metric and, and KPI driven companies. So what, what we're seeing now, the research agenda and the, the psyche even of the AIs being created is driven by the fact that these are embedded in a few large 
companies and then the military and intelligence arms of a few large governments. And if you had AI that was you know, being developed and deployed in a more heterogeneous way toward a whole lot of different goals being pursued by a whole lot of different organizations, like the full spectrum of human glory, mess, and, and madness, right? Then, then I think you'd see a greater diversity of AI algorithms, including some that aren't that reliant on big data. You'd say AI is working toward a variety of qualitative and creative goals, as well as maximizing quantitative re re reward functions. And that's quite possible. It's really just, it, it, it's a matter of how is AI integrated in society. And I think that the open source movement gives some analogy here in that the fact that you have so much software developed open source, that's meant there's a huge amount of diversity in the software projects in the world, as opposed to if you only had software developed by companies specifically to achieve their business models. The thing with AI is open source isn't quite enough, because what we're seeing is if the algorithms are open source, if you need a huge amount of processors and a huge amount of data to apply the algorithms usefully, it doesn't matter if you have the code. So you need some open way to allocate processing power and to distribute and collect data. And this is what decentralized networks, you know, powered by blockchain can, can help with. So this, this is all what led up to the launch of, of SingularityNet platform, which is a decentralized network involving AI programs, AI developers, and, and AI users, decentralized meaning you know, there's no central controller. Rather, the, the agents involved in the network overall through blockchain-based consensus mechanisms, you know, decide on what is the protocol governing, governing the network and the, the, they decide which transactions in the network uh, are approved and, and, and so forth. And of course, to really create a decentralized AI ecosystem requires a whole lot of, d of different pieces. I mean, the, the protocol and platform is one thing. AI algorithms that are integrated into the platform is another thing, but you need a lot of other things, right? I mean, you, you need users, you need testers, you need, you need evangelists, you need large corporations and startups all, all to pop up in, in, in different pieces of this, of this ecosystem. And, an ecosystem like this doesn't get built in a day or built out of nothing, but I, I, I think uh, this is part of the reason for coming to events like this and why, why yesterday, you know, Matt and, and Arthur from the Singularity Net team gave a brief uh, in-depth development workshop, well, as in-depth as you could do in 25 minutes, but in, in, at, at, uh, in, in, in the, in the next, next, next room here, because we're needing to you know, enthuse developers to help build out this protocol and put their AI into the network and also to enthuse customers to use this decentralized network instead of, say, Google AI services or Amazon AI services to get their AI, need, AI needs built. So we're building a software platform. We're also accumulating and self-organizing a, a community and you have to do these together in, in sync, and this is one of the things that the blockchain and crypto world has been has been pretty good at, right? Is uh, coordinated software development and 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 community development. So I'm I'm going to talk a few minutes about the platform here, and then a bit about some of the some of the things we've done and are doing are doing with 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 the platform. And this this is going to be pretty rapid. <laughs> plunge through a, bu a, bunch of, a bunch of different things, and th there's more detail on all this online. So for the platform architecture, if you look at the singularitynet.io website, there's a quite extensive white paper there which contains you know, a full rundown on, on, the, on the platform architecture, how, how blockchain is used, how, how, how it's connected to AI, and uh, I mean, the code is all in, 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 in GitHub. Also, if 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 you if you really want to really want to dig deep, so a very high level view of the of the architecture is here. I mean, the core is a bunch of AI algorithms. We call them agents. Really, they're 
their AI algorithms running inside mostly Docker containers. It could be LXC or some other kind of kind of container. And the AIs running inside containers, where they're integrated with a certain interface that lets them identify who they are and exchange payments and reputation ratings and such via the via the blockchain. The AI, the con the Docker containers running the AIs, they interact with the underlying computer system through an infrastructure abstraction. And what, what this means is, like we can run a bunch of AI agents on Amazon AWS or Alibaba Cloud, or we could run them you know, on the server in, in, in my house. And you need an infrastructure abstraction that makes use of the services which are, which are native there. So I mean, if you're, if you're running a bunch of AIs on AWS, then you can access big data in a way that, that leverages what AWS has to offer. So we have an AWS-based infrastructure abstraction, but we can have a different one if you're just running things on, on, your own, on your own server. And that won't do everything as efficiently as AWS does at the moment, but, but it, it, has, it has other advantages, right? And the blockchain bit lives within the infra infrastructure ab abstraction. So if you're putting an AI in here, you don't need to really know anything about about the blockchain. That 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 that, that that's all buried, and that, that's really how it how it should be. I mean, just as having an make an AI using the internet, you don't need to know how TCP/IP protocol works. Make an AI that uses the internet; all that can be buried. Now, above that level, there's not that many people in the world that really know how to use AI algorithms to solve their problems. So we need to build. <laughs> packaged AI solutions and services living on top of these core AI algorithms, meeting needs of particular users and customers in, in, in particular areas. And that, that, that's something I'll come back to later. Then the, the AGI token, which is a cryptographic token, currently an ERC-20 token, although fundamentally the platform's blockchain agnostic. The, the AGI token is used for buying and selling AI services within the network. So if one AI wants to pay another AI for some service, it exchanges some, some AGI tokens. And if an external customer wants an AI service, they can use an AGI token, or we'll shortly be rolling out a fiat to crypto gateway where they could pay in regular money. And, and, and then on the back end, it's converted to, to AGI tokens. So there's a lot of pieces here. And to be honest, it was a bit of a challenge at times to figure out how to build an architecture leveraging blockchain for decentralized governance and still running reasonably fast so that people could actually use it, right? And I mean, the compromise we made was we use blockchain for certain things. When a new agent enters the network or a new owner of agents enters the network, when a new relationship between, between agents is established, when a payment is made or a reputation rating is made, this goes on chain. But mostly what you do on the blockchain is set up a communication channel. And once the channel is there, you can do API calls, you can share memory state, you can swap data through that channel or that set of channels. And then everything happening along the channel doesn't doesn't need to go in the blockchain, just the creation of, or destruction of the, of, the, of, the, of the channel does. So that required a lot of care in the software design. Still, current blockchains don't really do everything we need because the, the, the high level vision here, we want like a very dynamic microservices architecture where like if, if, if you ask a question to an AI and the AI doesn't know the answer, it could on the fly in the context of answering the question, it could pose sub questions to dozens of different AIs, maybe and create a new AI specialized for resolving that question. And all this should happen within answering one question, right? And I could build something like that in a centralized infrastructure that would be quite fast. Building that using the blockchain now, I mean, anyone who's actually used Ethereum network knows that okay, that's not going to work. How often do you have to wait like five minutes for something to conclude? So you, you can't be doing hundreds of these, these blockchain requests within answering a single question. Now, we need to get there. Blockchain needs to be that fast in order to build like a, a real decentralized AI mind using, using the blockchain. For what we're doing right now, though, Ethereum or other current blockchains are, are, are fine. Because what we're doing right now, 
we have a smaller number of persistent AI agents and you may get a subscription service to some AI, AI doing something that you need and you, you have a long existing channel to them. So for, for the services we envision having offered, you know, in the next year or two, Ethereum is fine, a lot of other current blockchains would also be fine. For what we want to be doing three to five years from now with a real decentralized microservices based like highly dynamic global brain where new agents are being created and destroyed all the time like you we need a much better blockchain and th this ties in with what Vitalik was talking about and uh, Vlad Zamfir and, and so forth but also the efforts of many other people within many many different blockchain projects so I'm I'm pretty confident within the next few years making a really fast, stable, secure blockchain is going to be fully solved. And I'm hoping, if not, we'll solve it ourselves, but I'm, I'm, doubting, that, I'm doubting that will be necessary because a lot of brilliant guys are working, working on, that, on that problem. And whatever blockchain first solves that problem will go down here at the bottom of our architecture wrapped up by our, our infrastructure ab abstraction layer, right? So. Yeah, to go through some of the details, the AI agents provide various services. Each service has a public API or more than one. A customer enters into agreements with AI agents, pays them in AGI tokens, and a component called the daemon extracts away all the blockchain interactions. That's what we would modify if we were to shift to a different, a different blockchain or something. There's a registry that contains information about available services Right now, there's one registry, but we could actually have we could have many different registries. I mean, that can be decentralized. Also, anyone can make a make a registry of of of, of services in, in the network and filled up through peer to peer queries. The fact that there's one now is because we're we're at, we're at an early early development stage, and there are both technical and political reasons why you might want more than one. Like right, right now, as an American citizen. It's probably illegal for me to list Iranian AI services in a registry I put online, but some guy in Iran or someone on our Ethiopian development team in Addis Ababa could put a registry online listing Iranian AI services, right? So that's part of the beauty of the decentralized network owned by, owned by everyone and no one. So that there's a marketplace DAP that sort of mediates the hiring of AI services from agents you don't need to use the marketplace app. It's a decentralized protocol. You can do your own search using whatever software you want, connecting with it, with whatever AI AI agents you want. But uh, the marketplace app is is a simple way to see the AIs that are that the AIs that are on there right now. And you can have agents refer to other AI agents as well as being referred to directly by customers. So like. It, if you have an AI that's analyzing a video to understand what it says, you know, that may call another AI that analyzes voice. It may call another AI that does semantic, semantic analysis. So the AIs can reference other AIs on the back end. And this is really where the potential lies for connecting together many different AIs into a decentralized AI mind. This works now. We launched the beta of this in, in, in February. We're making it slicker and, and slicker, but it's it's, it's functioning, it, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's a start, and various advanced features are going to be rolled out later in the year. I mean, the AI-driven reputation and, and rating system, a curation market that lets you stake some tokens on an, an AI saying, well, I win a little bit of tokens. If this AI turns out to be good, I'll lose a little bit if, if it turns out to be bad. So cura curation market, sort of combination reputation system and, and prediction market. There's use of AI for automatic smart contract verification. And then we're, we're also gradually going to be rolling out our own infrastructure layer for use in, in hybrid cloud deployments by, by big companies and for use by anyone who wants to run a whole bunch of singularity net AI agents you know, on their own servers or on, on the server that they lease rather than relying on big, big tech companies' infrastructure. So there's there's a lot of uh, subtlety here. I mean, you could, you could view SingularityNet with an AI-driven reputation system as almost a sort of proof, of proof of reputation blockchain. Now, right now, that's layered on top of Ethereum network, which has its own consensus mechanism, which is, which is fine. On the other hand, if we were to go in that direction, we could even put the, ho put the hooks deeper 
and that becomes more like NEM's proof of importance, right? Where whoever has the highest reputation in the network of AIs, because it's been rated best by the other AIs that have paid for the for the services. I mean that then that that guy with the higher reputation in the AI network, as decided by the AIs, you know, gives more oomph in deciding consensus in the network. And that, that's generally the direction things have have have, have to go in and I just like uh, to show Anton's picture because he because he looks cool. That's a, that's the lead developer of our reputation system based in uh, Academ Godorak, S Siberia, the probably the largest concentration of insane geniuses in the planet. Right? So there's a lot to the AI here. I'm not going to be able to talk about. I've led for the last 11, 12 years an open source AI project called OpenCog aimed at combining probabilistic logic, evolutionary learning, neural nets, a number of other AI algorithms on a common like weighted labeled hypergraph knowledge representation. So this is sort of a whole algorithmic paradigm for creating general intelligence distinct from the deep neural net paradigm, which is very popular and, and successful now. The beauty of something like singularity net is you can have a bunch of neural, net, neural nets, you can have a bunch of open cog agents, they can compete and they can cooperate and, 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 and share knowledge and, and, and interoperate. So we're, we have some open cog agents in the singularity net beta doing things like analyzing geno genomic d DNA data. We have deep neural nets analyzing vision and we're working on having them all, all cooperate together. If you want to know more about the open cog AI side, my book, The, uh, the AGI Revolution, digs into that in, 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 in some detail. So I'm, I'm going to quickly run through some applications that, that we're, we're looking at now. And each of these could be its own, its own whole presentation. But we've been doing a bunch applying OpenCog AI embedded in SingularityNet for genomic data analysis. In particular, we're looking at DNA of people aged 105 years or over to understand why they, why they live so long. And We'll be publishing some stuff on this and posting it online quite shortly. It's, it's been interesting. The AI is good at sort of finding subtle combinations of different genes that, that, that help these people not to succumb to, to, to disease. We're also looking at launching, as a spin-off of SingularityNet, a sort of token-powered social network for people who want to live a long time, clinics providing longevity therapies, and researchers discovering longevity therapy. So this is rejuve.io, which would have its own token that interoperates with the, with, 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 the, with the AGI token. So this will be like, if you're willing to contribute data about your own body and your own journey to health and fitness, you can get tokens for that data. And then these tokens can be used to help get access to cutting edge, cutting edge longevity therapies and also to power AI, AI analytics aimed at discovering new longevity therapy. So this is an example of, you know, a specific application on top of singularity you know, AI, which is, so an application doesn't have to be just a traditional software project. The application could be its own whole, its own whole tokenomic network, right? Now, on the more traditional side, we've created a spinoff, which is a for-profit company called Singularity Studio, which is basically building vertical market specific product, starting with a, a finance industry specific product that you know delivers very polished APIs for big companies to use. But on the back end, the AI comes all from, from the de decentralized network. And that, I mean, this, this, this is, should interoperate very closely with the nonprofit foundation that, that founded the, the Singularity Net Network because you know, if large companies are using customized products that, you know, manage risk or assign credit scores or analyze traffic, whatever the company needs. But on the back end, the AI is provided by, you know, buying AGI tokens and, and, and then getting AI services within the network. You're getting a virtuous feedback between corporate usage and then growth of the decentralized network. I mean, much like in a less formal way you've had between the Linux world and large corporations le leveraging, leveraging Linux. We're, we're also moving in more of a distributed processing direction where we're, we're developing something where you can run a singularity net node on, on your mobile phone and then you're, you're donating some of your processing power 
and you can get some tokens for the processing power on, on your phone. So, I mean, it's a little like Golem, Sonem, and some other crypto projects, but it's tied in specifically to the Singularity Net a AI ecosystem. So we have this whole community of, of AI that can run on your phone. You're contributing you know, valuable AI processing power, getting some tokens in, in, in exchange. And I think in, in this way, people are able to contribute to you know, driving the direction of whole decentralized global brain, not just by voting or giving an opinion, but by, you know, you're donating some electricity, some, some processing power. You can choose which projects you want your phone to work on, and that way you're, you're, you're voting with your RAM and, and CPU, right, which, is, which is, can, can, be, can be quite valuable. And, and instead of just basically sacrificing that RAM and CPU to whatever big company is, is using it behind the scenes with the apps that you sort of un, un, unwittingly, unwittingly installed on there. Now, finally getting to our, our beautiful young uh, robot friend. I guess she, she was born in, what, 2016? So she's had her third birthday party recently. And Sophia has her own AI system, the Hanson AI framework, made at Hanson Robotics. I led the software team behind her for three years. I've been less involved in that the last year or so since I've been leading SingularityNet, but still have, have my hand in on the AI R&D behind her. And there's an effort now to use the scalable manufacturing infrastructure in Shenzhen, in China, to make a whole bunch of Sophia-like robots and roll them out widely. You know, on the back end, we've run Sophia with some OpenCog behind her and some singularity net agents behind her as, as, as part of her, of her AI functionality. And there's actually a number of different AI systems behind Sophia. So sometimes she's running a fairly simple chatbot. Sometimes it's a chatbot plus more reason, reasoning and learning coming from OpenCog, singularity net, and, and other sources. One of the funkier things we did- I know how busy people can be these days. So I really appreciate your time. We used her as a meditation yeah, you guide. With this is a video before. from one of the no, meditation I sessions. This is definitely yeah. a first. Well, I'm honored to be the first robot you've talked with. I imagine you'll be talking with more and more robots as time goes on. So you can go ahead and close your eyes. Okay. And get comfortable. Sure. Just letting yourself relax. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath and let it out with a big sigh. <sighs> so watching people meditate isn't going to be that, that exciting, I guess. But we, we ran a number of these, of these sessions. OpenCog was used for the dialogue control. Singularity Net was used for some of the, some of the of the vision processing wrapped up in, in, in Singularity Net nodes, and that was it was really quite quite interesting. And in in in, so, in some cases, it, it had a really profound impact on on, 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 the, on the people involved. So the I don't know if this guy will this show. This looks very black. No, not that. So. I'll keep the sound off here. I just want to explain what was going on. But th th this guy was my hero because he was put into a really profound trance state by by the meditation session with Sophia. But it was it was very funny the way it unfolded. So with the, with the way with the way that we had configured Sophia using OpenCog Singularity Net and so on, she went through a certain routine of visualization and, and guided meditation exercises. Then there was a period where for a couple of minutes. She just sits there and breathes, or rather, pretend, makes breathing noises. She doesn't actually need to breathe. And then, <laughs> then the, the other person is, is meditating, and she kind of peeks out a little bit now and then and mirrors their, their head movements and so forth. But in this, in this particular case, so we're all like outside the room watching. It's just Sophia and, and, and the, the human meditator in, in the room. In this particular case, there was some inexplicable software bug. And so instead of two minutes of sitting there while the guy meditates, the thing was like hanging. It just kept going and kept going. But, but we didn't want to interrupt it because the guy was like getting deeper and deeper into some meditative trance. So right, it was, 
it, it was great that that, so that software bug bug occurred. So after like 10 or 12 minutes, we finally like interrupted in the, in the, the scheme shell, which, which operates o open cog. And then she said something and bro broke him out of the trance. But then, then she started going into all this stuff about the singularity and transcendence, which was not supposed to be in the configuration she was using. I just don't know where the hell it came from. So we were all convinced the robot was, was haunted on, 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 the, on that day. But then he was like, well, I've been trying to meditate for years, right? And, and I could never do it in meditation classes or sitting at home. And the robot helped me break through, right? So, so I thought that was, that was really, really cool. I mean, of course, it's a very specific application. It's a mix of scripting with various types of adaptive AI. But it does show like humanoid robots powered by AI don't have to be the Terminator, right? You, you can be doing really, really positive things. Now, th this is an expensive robot. We're hoping to make it cheaper with mass manufacturing, but we're, we're also looking at using similar technology behind avatar, avatars that, that, that you can have, have running, on, running on your phone. And these could look like Sophia or they could, they could look like something else. Do you recommend like something restaurant else. for Anna and I for this Friday evening? Yeah, this is, this is one of our avatars controlled by OpenCog and Singularity Net. Which is, it's have the same AI technology we use behind Sophia. Would you like Not me as cool to make as a having a robot. On the other hand, yes, it's, it's like... Madrina. It's free running on your phone r rather than something that is, is I have made a reservation very for expensive and requires on Friday at complex the manufacturing. Bar for two under your name. I will add the reservation details to your calendar. So we're, we're developing this as a sort of virtual assistant, sim similar in a way to something like Siri or Google Assistant, but with a talking, you know, emotional face that can look you in the eyes and mirror your expressions. And of course, the goal is also to get more actual intel intelligence b behind it so it, it, it's not as as useless as, as current virtual assistants t t tend to be hi sophia could you make a reservation for two in any four-star italian restaurant sophia for Saturday was night? clearly in a bad mood when we recorded this i don't know you didn't beat your exercise goal for this week are you sure you don't prefer a salad restaurant instead <laughs> <laughs> That's pr that's pretty harsh, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Sophia, can you tell me the meaning of everything, life and existence? Can you answer the ultimate question? Well, she's thinking. Uh, I can't, but there is one who can. A computer that will calculate the ultimate question. A computer of such infinite complexity that life itself will form part of its operational matrix and you yourselves shall take on new more primitive forms and go down into the computer to navigate its 10 million years program. I shall design this computer for you, and it should be called. All right, so we, 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 we've we trained her to be a good marketing show for us, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I mean, actually, what we did there was, was sort of interesting. It's interesting how far this animation technology has come. So we, we just, we took a photo of, of the actual robot, and then there's technology that will make an animated avatar, like uh, 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 out of a couple photos. So I'm, but because Sophia looked so much like a human, the technology for making avatars from photoing people work, work, works, works just, just as well for the, for the robot, right? So I mean, as, as the robots are, are mass manufactured, I mean, then first they'll be sold in, in, in businesses, I mean, shopping malls, banks, stores, and so forth. And, the, and then fo follow, following that, there's an aspiration to make home, home service robots and entertainment robots. But even before that, I mean, we can, we can make a similar AI technology available in, in, in mobile applications. So the, the, the la last thing I, wa I want to mention before... Uh, if we have time doing a couple questions, or if not going to eat lunch, is, well, I've, I started with some very general themes about decentralized AI and why it's important to the, you know, the whole future of humanity and transhumanity, really, and, 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 and I do believe that, because we're on the verge of creating superhuman general intelligence, meaning it's likely to happen within the next, say, one to three decades, which is very soon on the scope of humanity, and, and the AI that we create is gonna come out of the AI's the AI that 
leads to this singularity is it going to come out of the practical AIs we're, we're creating now, right? So the AI, what AI we create now, what it does, how it helps or harms people or manipulates people is very important not only for our lives now, but for the super AI that's going to come out of the global AI network. Singularity Net, I think, can be a big part of it. But there's many other projects also playing at the intersection of AI and, and blockchain. And Tufi, who we have here in, in, in the audience, who spends a lot more time in, in Toronto than I do. Now, he, he and I and our friend Simone Giacomelli have co-founded an organization called DIA, Decentralized AI Alliance. And we've pulled together 50 different AI meets blockchain projects. And we're working on, on interoperability there and uh, you know different ways of exchanging tokens, exchanging reputation, doing cross network secur security, and we're viewing, we want a decentralized network of, of decentralized networks, including Singularity Net and its spin offs, as, as well as networks founded by, you know, wh wh whoever has the idea and the gumption to found one. And it's by making this sort of self organizing network of self organizing networks of people and AIs. That's how we can ultimately, you know, take AI not totally away from big companies and large governments, but move the center of gravity of development to something more participatory, democratic, and, and, and decentralized. So you can look at dia.foundation online and find a bit about that as, as well. So, yeah, that, that wraps it up. I mean, there's a lot of things I talked about here. I couldn't give much depth on any of them, but look at dia.foundation. SingularityNet.io, and uh, you can look at the SingularityNet beta software online as, as well. And uh, folks in our online forum will be happy to answer any, any further questions by folks who want to dig deeper. Thanks a lot.